So my husband, Ted, is in the military. We've generally lived on a base every station we've been to because the surrounding towns can be very crime-ridden and sketchy. And with my husband gone most of the time, the extra security is appreciated. I work from home due to us moving so often. So one afternoon, I was taking a break. I had made a bite to eat and was snuggling up on the couch with my dog. That's when I heard the sliding glass door open. And it was so nonchalant that I thought it was Ted. I saw my cat run from the kitchen and a shadow standing near the door entering it. I thought maybe he had come back for something, so I called out for him and was like, What are you doing home? Did you forget something? No answer. This is where I got an eerie feeling. After I asked what he was doing here, I saw the shadow move and heard the click of the sliding door lock. From there he walked to the laundry room and shut the door. I still hadn't received any response. So I'm sitting on the couch scared out of my mind and I call my husband hoping to hear his phone in the laundry room. I don't hear a ring but he answers. I asked him why he came home and didn't answer me and all he says is That wasn't me. Grab the dog and get in your car. I freak out at this point. After getting off the phone with Ted, I grab the dog and run to the car. From there I call the military police. Waiting for them was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. When they got there, they cleared the house and found nobody. They asked me to make a statement and even they were baffled that someone would try this on a base. We still live there. I'm scared that he'll come back. I've been debating whether or not I should share this story, then I figured I might as well. Okay, so this one happened when I was probably four or five years old. We live in a tiny town in North Carolina. Combined with the city and the entire county, we have a roughly 5,000 person population. Now, when I used to live with my parents before I married, we lived 10 minutes from town. Our neighbors are families and they live about an acre away in each direction. We know everyone, and everyone knows us. When I was young, I had a particular fear of leaving my curtains up at night. I had to have my windows covered before I could sleep. I was too young to verbalize it at the time, but the concept of waking up with someone looking through my windows terrified me. After this incident, this particular fear of mine has amplified. Anyways, to get to the actual story, we lived pretty much by ourselves. If anyone comes onto our property, we know who they are. So when my father and older brother started finding boot prints that didn't belong to them, we got a little nervous. Living out as far as we did meant that the police, fire department or EMS would take much longer to arrive in a bad situation. My father had taught my older brother, sister and myself how to handle guns, even from an early age. At six, I was fairly proficient with my Daisy BB gun. So, over the course of several days, they started to notice more boot tracks. Stuff was being moved around in the barn. The building door was open one morning, though we couldn't tell if anything was missing or not. It was apparent that someone was snooping around at night. Since I was so young, my parents didn't want to frighten me, but my brother did. He told me that someone was creeping around the yard at night, and one day I would wake up and he'd be in the house. To put it lightly, my brother was an asshole. My brother always made fun of the fact that I would not sleep with my windows uncovered. He told me that I needed to face my fears, and eventually, during this time that someone was definitely sneaking around, he convinced me to sleep with my curtains drawn back. I craved his approval more than anything, so I agreed to do so. He said now was the best time to do it, and I believed him. So, that night, I left my curtains drawn. It took a long time for me to get to sleep, but eventually it did come. I was always a very light sleeper, and even the slightest gust of wind would wake me up. I would always wake up four or five times a night. That night, 
I heard the porch just outside my window creaking. I tried to ignore it, thinking that it had to be my imagination. Then, a shadow passed over the lights coming from the lamp outside. I opened my eyes and sat up. A man was standing in the window, hands cupped up to the glass. In the process of running out of my room, I did piss myself. I ran straight for my parents' bedroom. At the same time, the doorknob to the front door started jiggling hard. He was trying to get in. I managed to get into the bedroom and tell my parents what had happened. My dad grabbed a gun and a flashlight and headed outside, throwing the door open. My mum locked it behind him before waking up my brother. After nearly half an hour, my brother came back in. His face was sweaty and pale. He sent my brother and I to bed, but we both sat up and listened. My father had found a tarp and blankets set up about a half a mile into the woods, just off the logging trail that had been dug up some 20 years prior. The guy had been living there for a while. My dad apparently tore the place apart. He'd had sight of the guy but lost him in the end. The police came and took statements from my parents and had a look in the woods, but didn't find anything. They figured that he wouldn't be back anytime soon. We never saw him again, and I always sleep with my windows covered. When I was about 7 years old in 2007, I was very close to being abducted. I remember it vividly and I'm still terrified of what happened. I live in a two-story house in a safe neighborhood. My mother and I were the only ones home at the time. My mother was taking a bath upstairs while I watched Nickelodeon downstairs alone in the living room. The way my house is set up is that anyone can see the living room through the front door even if the door is shut. I remember hearing a knock on the door and I couldn't ignore it since whoever it was at the door could see me and knew that someone was home. My mom usually could hide in the kitchen until the person knocking went away and it was too late for me to run into the kitchen since he could see me. I remember feeling guilty since my mom has always warned me to never open the door to strangers. I got the key and unlocked the door. A man in his early 30s or late 20s wearing work clothes with a green tie was at the door. He asked me if I knew where my neighbor was and that he needed to see him. I also noticed that the guy was looking around the inside of my house while he waited for me to answer. I asked him which neighbor he was talking about and then he said that he was older and lived somewhere near here. He didn't give me a name and was as vague as possible. I felt bad because I didn't know who he was talking about, since I live in a neighborhood with primarily older couples. I told him that I couldn't help him, but then he insisted that I help him search the neighborhood for my neighbor. I declined and the guy kept asking me. I told him no once more and the guy then grabbed my arm and started to pull me out of my house. I grabbed the door frame and called for my mom. The man let go of my arm and started to casually walk back to his car. I'm pretty sure that it was a beige Civic, and I'm not too sure. It honestly scares me the most that he didn't bolt or speed off. He was too calm. I just stood there and watched him drive away as if nothing bad had happened. I didn't tell my mum about this incident until I was about 15, and she flipped her shit. I regret not telling her sooner because there's no telling what this guy has done after trying to kidnap me. To this day, I still panic when I hear someone knocking on the front door. I grew up in the rural south, next door to my grandparents. We lived in a deeply wooded area right off the highway on a large plot of land my grandparents owned. When this took place, only my grandmother was alive. While not huge, our woods were large enough road from the highway we lived on, so no one would have even noticed. I was in bed when the man came back. It seemed as if the strange car visits had lessened, but my father went out late one evening to get CDs from his pickup, and they were out there again. My mother made us stay inside while she called the police, but I remember the sound of my father screaming as he thundered after the men. Just like last time, they disappeared into the woods. The police couldn't find them. They agreed that they were stalking us out. 
and we were poor so there was no money for security equipment. My mother had never allowed guns in the house until this point but my grandfather's old rifles were now being kept in their closet. While we lived in our trailer, our grandmother lived beside us in a little brick house she built with my grandfather in the 70s. It had an old fashioned carport with steps that lead to her front door, clunky with frosted glass shatters from top to bottom. It made a distinct heavy sound of shaking glass when it was knocked on. Usually, a family member would sleep over with her in case she needed something, but she had been feeling well that day and didn't need help. She always stayed up late watching television and liked to sleep during the day when it was sunny and warm. A man came to her door sometime past 3 in the morning. She called out to ask who it was, thinking it might be one of us. There was no answer. He continued to knock while my grandmother told him to go away and leave her alone. Instead, he opened her door. It was old and fairly easy to unlock but her chain lock kept him from getting in. So, he spoke directly to her through the crack. He would only tell her, Come on, let me in. Let me in. I know you're alone. I have no idea how she kept calm during this or how she had the nerve to lie on her couch and get equally irate with the strange man at her door in the night. She couldn't walk well and her phone was in the kitchen. After 15 minutes of this exchange, the stranger calmly closed the door and went away. My grandmother called our home first, he could be coming to us next, and then she called the police. I was sitting in my grandfather's recliner listening as she told the officers what had happened. She was calm then too, with her jaw stuck out in anger. Obviously, nothing ever came of it, and we never found out who was watching us or why. The man never came back. The strangers in their unfamiliar cars stopped coming. We never saw anyone outside again. When I was about 15 years old, I was heading home from the train station. I lived on a military base and it was about a 15 to 20 minute walk. I had just reached the entrance to a long, dark and narrow alley when I heard the sound of music and a car approaching me from behind. I moved as close to the walls as possible to allow the car to pass me, but they ended up turning slightly sideways and cutting me off. I stopped, and a man came out of the driver's side and looked at me at the opposite side of the car. He was an African-American man who spoke perfect English. He attempted to greet me in poor Japanese and then asked me to be my friend in English. I'm Japanese and probably looked local to them, but I was in fact born and raised in America, so I pretended that I didn't understand what he was saying to me. He slowly started to make his way around the car towards me, but I remained in sync with his movements and backed away in the opposite direction from him. This amused him and he started laughing loudly and taunting me. You're afraid of me. Ha <laughs> ha, you're afraid of me. I sheepishly put my hands up in front of me as I continued to back away towards the front of the car. Some light illuminated the inside of the car and my eyes rested on the face of another man in the passenger seat. The man outside saw my eyes shift away from him and made a lunge at me. I was still just out of his reach and shot off sprinting down the alley. The man ran back to the car and jumped in his car. I heard his tires screech as he reversed out of the alley. At this point I thought maybe that they were going to leave me alone, but as I neared the end of the alley, I heard the music from the car getting loud once again. Their car reaches me at the same time I get out of the alley, and I run right past it and slip through some bars where only pedestrians were allowed to go. I can see the lights and fences out of the gate to the base, and I'm relieved. I was finally safe. Or was I? It never dawned on me at the time, but a few weeks later, I realized that the man was American and very close to the base. He must have been a soldier and tried to take advantage of the Japanese local girls that find shame in rape. He probably didn't realize I was American until he saw me run through the gate. Nothing came of it but how many times could I have passed him at the commissary 
or the PX afterwards. I don't know. This story is about my mum. She's been living in the same house for about 12 years. And it's in a shady neighbourhood, lots of gang activity and sirens can always be heard not far away. I can't count the number of times the convenience store across the street has been robbed since we moved in. But we were never concerned. My mother created an unquestionably comfortable home and I always felt safe. In 2013, when my father died, she adopted a dog for company as it was just her living in the house at the time when this incident occurred. The dog is yappy, sweet as hell, but any sort of noise outside, whether it's a car door slamming or our mailman, she will bark and bark and bark and bark. This can be scary if it catches you off guard or if it's late at night, but of course, it's also reassuring that she's so alert. And that's exactly what happened. My mother told me it was late one night, maybe 2am. She was getting ready for bed. She stays up late watching investigative discovery and the like. There are two doors that must be opened to get inside the house. The front door has a large window and opens into her porch where she keeps her deep freeze. There is a larger metal door after the porch which opens directly into the living room of her house. She locks it every night before she goes to bed. She likes to sleep on the couch in the living room. She claims her bed upstairs hurts her back. All of a sudden, her dog started barking her head off. At first, my mum scolded her, assuming that she heard a car pass by or something. But then my mum heard it too. Someone knocking on the front door. The doors had muffled the sound of the knock. My mum sat there silently contemplating what to do and hoping whoever it was would just go away. And so did her dog. Now, my mother wasn't born yesterday. She's a tough old bird and won't take anyone's shit. She opened the metal door and went to the window, lifting the blinds, and she saw a disheveled girl standing on the front step. My mum thought that perhaps she was drunk as she was unsteady on her feet and slurred when she spoke. My mum asked her what she wanted. Is Danielle here? The woman asked. No, there is no one here by that name. My mum responded politely as she dropped the blinds and was about to go back into the house. The woman pounded on the door this time with force, lots of force in fact. My mum thought that she had been kicking it. Let me in, she screamed. At this point my mum is irked. She goes back to the front door, lifts the blinds again and adamantly tells the woman to just fuck off and that there's no one there named Danielle. This woman finally left, but it wasn't until the next day that my mum realised the trouble that she could have been in if she had opened the door. Her front door is surrounded by a short metal fence about waist high. She gives us all hell any time we forget to close the gate, and when she was retrieving the morning paper, she noticed that this woman had left the gate open. Annoyed again, she put on her slippers to go outside to close it. That's when she saw it. Laying on the grass beside our walkway was a crowbar. My mum then understood what force was used to pound on our front door. She had no idea the woman had been holding it. The window itself can only see a person on the other side from about the chest up, and it had been dark. Who knows what could have happened if my mother decided to open the door. 